Hallelujah. I am so happy this morning. Hallelujah. I'm very, very happy. I was having a dream about you when I woke up. When my alarm went off. All right, that's what I hear that dream after the after the uh, conference this morning, after the, okay. the the powerful meeting this morning. I love this beautiful outfit. This is so beautiful. I love it. It's a lot of gold. All right. Uh, battery, don't be envious of me. Lazy, don't be. I have the right to be beautiful. Yep. G. Do I not have the do, do I not have the right to be beautiful? All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Blessed is, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed art thou, O Lord, King of the universe. For thou derive great joy in all that you have made. This morning, we come before you and we bow before you. Dear Jesus, how precious you and the Holy Ghost and the angels and the saints are to us and all the living creatures of heaven. Everything is vibrant with life. Thank you, Lord, for giving us such a great joy in our hearts for filling us with such contentment and enjoyment as we've never had. We thank you for filling us up with such an immeasurable power, uncommon, unlimited, full of favor. Thank you for pouring out upon us the spirit and the gift of the blessing that brings about multiplication. This morning, Lord, your word will be turned into things. The word we are about to read will manifest, will become flesh. It will become spirit in our very flesh. It will become life. It will produce such a great activities as we've never seen. There will be such an enormous provoked miracles. Lord, suddenly there will be an end to an evil regime in different nations of the world. Wickedness will be wiped away by the plenty of righteousness that arises out of what you are doing through us. Lord, this morning, we ask you that today you invest in us and you invest in our names. Use our names and our person, invest your resources into us. Nothing will be wasted. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for joy, 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 joy. Thank you for drunkenness in joy. <laughs> Thank you for joy, Lord. Thank you for drunkenness of joy. Thank you for the wine of happiness that I have drunk. Thank you for giving me not just glasses, cups of that wine. Thank you for giving me ocean of wine of heaven. 
And I ask that this morning that it be poured upon your people that they will be drunk so that they will be filled with so much power and confidence and they will begin to they will begin they will begin to manifest spiritual giftedness they will begin to manifest sons of god in their personality wow thank you lord it's on this morning lord thank you in the name of jesus amen let me read you something that you have been passing by without thinking about it there is so much that we want to cover this week wow 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 wow, wow. <laughs> something has happened listen to this uh, Matthew chapter 2, hear the word of the living God. From verse 1. Now, when Jesus, the Son of God, was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, see what the Bible says. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Mm, 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 mm. Saying, where is he that is born? Listen to this. King of the Jews, for we have seen his star in the east. Oh my gosh! And we are come to worship him. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! I have to do a little dance. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Many of you are like, what is happening this morning? You have no idea what's going on. What's going on is bigger than me. It's bigger than I. <laughs> Listen to this. Let me see. I'm going to look at it in the Greek Bible and see what it says. I love this. 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 Ooh. Ah. Ah, 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 ah. Jesus being generated or being born. Being generated. Pew. In Bethlehem. Being born, see, gen, like generator, that which produces power. It means that, it means that you were, it means that you you were made from somewhere. You come from a source of power. Please, please watch the person that just came in. Watch, watch, watch your phone. Press mute on your phone. Thank you very much. The Bible does not speak of being born. In Greek, it talks about being generated. Like from a generator. It speaks of power. You come from the loins of somebody. You come from a powerful womb. The loins of a powerful man. You come from God. That's why you are spirit, because God is spirit. And Jesus came as spirit. Just as we came as spirit, we are spirits. But we are talking about somebody who is greater than all of us. We are not equal with Jesus except in a technical sense that he has drawn us to the Father through himself. 
so that all he is we are all he has we have all he does we do what we see jesus do is what we will be doing and that is what we are doing now generated and where that happened was in bethlehem of the judean country let's see what it says here in days of herod the king it said it in history the supernatural find its place in the natural and did not cease to be supernatural it does not mean that because you are here in the flesh that you cease to be supernatural you cease to be spirit you are you are born into history you come from the kingdom of God into this earth. God authorized your coming. He, he released you to come. You are God's agent. You are here to fulfill a destiny for God, a dream. God dreamt his dream into you. God put his plan into you. There is a plan of God that will never be fulfilled except through you. La, 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 la. Hmm. Lo, see what the wise men are called. They are called wise men. It's a wrong interpretation of who they are. Wise men simply means that they were smart people. They were filled with wisdom. But that's not who they really are. When the Bible use, when the, the writers of the kingdom version uses the word wise men, they are simply talking about the action they took. It was a wise action. They are actually called magians, magians, or magi. That's who they really are. They are people who possibly come from medo persia that is Iran, or like Iraq, all those territories. India, all those areas, the eastern, the, the, the Asian countries, the, the, the Middle Eastern countries, sorry. They are from, when you go a little bit back to the other side uh, of the Middle East. You are looking at the territory where Esther was a queen around those areas. They are called Magi's. They were, they were wealthy men, wealthy people, rulers. They were rulers. That's one thing you need to know about them. They were rulers and they were laners. All through their life, they were laners. There were people who were also godly. They were godly. You see, they were not Jews. They were not born again, but they were righteous people. They were, they were rulers, kings. These are kings of nations. These are mighty, powerful people very wealthy in money and material resources and had great wisdom from God. And there were people who understood astronomy. We are not talking about astrology. These are not practitioners of the occultic art. They are not, let me repeat, these are not people who practiced magic in case you hear their name major you begin to think about magic no they are not people who practiced witchcraft no they were not stargazers 
they were not interpreters of signs and wonders. There were actually people who had a gift called the ability to discern humans and ability to discern seasons, ability to know what it means when a particular moon, a particular star, a particular weather changes, they discern the new the meanings. So when they saw a particular star appeared in their nations, in that particular territory where they were, where they lived, where they ruled, this doesn't mean that there were only three men that came. It means that they came with servants. They came with servants. Please, can you turn that thing off? Please, thank you very much. Can you press mute? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you this morning. Okay, I did it. Oh, Lachi, what is wrong with you this morning? What is going on with you? Can you be quiet? Can you be quiet? Yeah, I think. <sighs> All right, let's continue. So while these people were in their own country, they saw a particular star appeared in the sky. When that star appeared, they had discernment what that star means. There was a communication between the star and them. There was a communication between heaven and those men, and these three men. We are not told whether it was one of them that received the discernment, or two of them, or three of them. We are not told how these things happened. Maybe one of them might have received it. We are not really told how all this is worked out, because it was not the purpose of the hagiographers, the holy writers of the Bible, to tell us all the intricacies of how it happened. The Bible, the, the, the writers of scripture doesn't go into detail about how uh, it tells you that the Lord spoke, how that speaking happened, we are not told. But normally when I read scriptures, heaven has been kind enough to play a movie for me to watch what happens. This is what happened. See, God will always want to make sure everyone saw it. When the star appeared in the sky, from the very moment Jesus came out of the womb, his star came up. At that same moment, the very time Jesus came out, Mary and Joseph was cleaning him. and putting on clothes on him, his star began to shine. It means that it was the brightest star, the shining star, and the biggest star in that territory. In the entire Middle East, and the entire East, all of the Middle East, all of, all of Asia, all the way to Africa, 
all the way to India. All of those territories, they saw the star. But only three powerful rulers were able to make out what it meant. <laughs> but for Joseph, the entire world would have died of hunger, including his own family. The supernatural, God Almighty, heaven always intervened to save humans. Just like heaven is going to intervene in America to save Americans. There was a king in Israel. There was a king in Judah called Herod. There were chief priests, Pharisees, Sadducees, all the religious leaders, the scientists of their time. The witch doctors of their time, the voodoo practitioners of their time. They gaze us into the occultic realms and planetary bodies. And yet they didn't know what it meant. What it meant when a particular big star appeared in the sky. They thought it was just the same star like the rest of the stars that come and go. But these three rulers, the three magis, they knew that there's something strange about that star. As they look up, the star spoke to them. The forces behind the physical star in the sky, in our orbit, connected with their spirit, connected with their minds, they immediately were told. See, if you are willing to know, then you will be told. Please write that down. If you are willing to know, if you are willing to learn, then you will be told. Curiosity will lead to discovery. Please write that down. Curiosity will lead to discovery, mighty discovery. So they sat down, ah, what does this star mean? And suddenly they got it. A king has been born among us. But we, that's the star of a king. And not only that, they were also told, so let me clarify so that you know. God uses physical phenomenon like <laughs> God uses certain things for judgment and also to speak, to communicate. For example, in the month of August, that's next month, we are going to experience a partial uh, eclipse of the sun from the Oregon coast all the way to the east coast of the United States. We are going to see a partial eclipse. There are certain things that, is, that happens, like when the moon turns into a bloody colors, there are certain things that happens in the universe among the stars, the moon, the sun, the movement of the water, the shaking of the earth, including earthquakes. There are certain movements of the celestial and planetary bodies that God is communicating something to us. For example, move away. For example, something is about to happen. A judgment is about to come. Economy is about to collapse. Somebody in position of power is about to die. Somebody in position of authority is about to flee.
the Senate or House of Representatives is about to collapse. A mighty judge is about to die. A nation, a nation is about to go to war. Things, I mean, the, the universe is communicating. God, is, God normally, when people are not listening, then God will release stars to speak. He will, he will speak through the moon, the sun, the stars, and the movement of the planets. Let me, let me repeat, this is not astrology. This is astronomy. So when these men saw this in the East, they knew that a king has been born among the Jewish people of their own blood, not a foreigner coming to rule over them, but a real king has been born among them. So heaven communicated with this. So these are men who were in touch with heaven. They worshiped the living God. They worship, these are men who worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's how it sounds to me. These are men whom God decided to grant salvation by going to see the one who saves from sin the king of the Jews. So they came to Bethlehem and said, where is he that has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. And that is what I want to talk to you this morning about. Who removed your star from the sky? Who removed your star from the sky? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. So the three rulers, powerful and wealthy rulers, men with great discernment and righteousness, they now decided to do this. They said, since God has shown us the star of this king, this king is greater than us. This king is greater than any other king that has been born in history. They knew it. What we are going to do we are going to load up our horses, our camels, our donkeys. Remember in those days there were only camels, donkeys, etc. They were, I don't think there were horses. And so they took their servants, their soldiers to protect them, and they took a lot of gifts to go and present to this king, to this baby king. So they started their journey. God decided to give them a GPX, a satellite, and which, what was the satellite? The same star they saw, immediately they decided to make a move. The star went ahead of them. The star went ahead of them until they came to Jerusalem and were asking questions. These men thought that Maybe people in Jerusalem, the capital, knew that a king has been born. They didn't know. The same star that they saw in the east was also there in Jerusalem. The same star was there all over. That one single star was shining and everyone could see it. So they came to Jerusalem thinking that, okay, Everyone in Jerusalem should know about this. So they came asking, where is he who has been born? They thought that there was a celebration going on in Jerusalem about Jesus. There was none. The people in Israel did not even know that the king had been born among them. But outsiders knew. Outsiders saw his star. So it was reported to Herod there, some rulers here with their soldiers, they are coming with great wealth, 
they are asking about a king that has been born. So, when I will be dealing with this in detail, I will tell you the full story. We will look at it word by word, verse by verse, as I normally do. But this morning, I want to ask you a question. Because that's what I'm asked to limit myself. When you were coming into this world, when you came out of your mother's womb, you were supposed to have a star. Some of you, your star came out and shine and, and, uh, and, uh, for a little bit and disappeared. Others, your star followed you until you were a teenager, it disappeared. Others, immediately you got married, your star disappeared. I'm, I'm letting you know what heaven told me last night. God is my witness. I told G what we were going to be ministering this morning. And, and I dictated it to her and she sent me an email a note about that. G, was this the topic that we wanted to deal with this morning? No, so I was wondering why the topic was changed. There you go. So some of you, 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 your star followed you until you landed your first job. Somebody removed it. Sometimes there is a star. Let, let me share it with you. you. You need to know this. Instead of me saying sometime, this is how I'm going to put it. Individuals have their stars. Families have their stars. A brand, a brand name that is a product or a service can have its own star up there in the sky. Nations have their stars. I want you to be aware of this. <laughs> Who removed your star while you were in the womb? Or when you came out of the womb? Or when you were growing up? Excuse me. Or when you started your business? Somebody went and removed it. I was told last night that many people are suffering today because they don't care about their star. Why do, why do God release a star concerning a particular person and put there? Now, let me tell you, there are, there are over 200, there are over 200 billion galaxies. Let me see whether I have Google here. So that you can hear it. Let's see what I have Google. Hold on. Where is Google here? Okay, I don't have Google on my. Let me see. Hold on one minute. Let me see what I can do that here. I want you to hear it. Google. Okay, there we go. Where is um I'm looking for my mm, okay. It's not what I'm looking for. I was looking for okay Google. wanted you to hear I wanted you to hear um, okay let me share this with you so that you can know 
what I'm trying to, oh, here it is. Here it is. I think so. Okay. Well, this one is not working. It's working the other one. There are about 200, there are more than 200 billion galaxies and more than 100 billion stars. 100 billion. There are only 7 point something billion human beings in the universe. And we are talking about 100 billion stars and 200 billion galaxies. Think about that. And each of the galaxies contain planets. So we have more than 200 billion planets. Think about that. More than 200 billion planets. <laughs> you don't know what you're dealing with. So, so that you don't, you don't start thinking about, oh, how is it that we are so many? How, why should any, everybody have stars? Look, we are only 7 billion. We are so small. We are not even equal to, we, we don't even reach 0. 0. 0. something, something, something of the numbers of angels. Are you aware that each Christian is supposed to have up to about 12,000 angels following you? When I will teach about, when I will begin to minister about the angels of our blessing, the angel of our protection, the angel that are sent to go with us, you will know how many angels are supposed to be with you. Because we are talking about billions of angels, billions. We're not talking about 20 billion. The stars of heaven is more than galaxies itself. If we have, if we have more than 200 billion galaxies, think about how many billions of angels we have. Because you think only on, all you deserve is just, because you are making yourself look like a beggar. All you have is just one angel. That's it. No, 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 no. No, man. No girl. Different things you want to do, you should have different angels doing, saving you. You are a king. You were born king or queen of your family or of your territory, of a brand, of a nation. And angels have been coming to ask, when is this man or woman gonna know that he or she was born to rule, born to be a king. When is he or she going to ask for the restoration of the force of heaven speaking about you? Now, let me tell you, are you aware that when you go to Hollywood, people who have accomplished something in life, movie stars, great actors, sports people, business people, people who accomplish some greatness, they have their star engraved with gold in Hollywood. And you can go and walk through it for each person. Seriously, I want mine there. Now, if humans have their stars on the earth, how much more do you think that we don't have our own stars in the sky run. Why do God release a star concerning you? Okay, there are two things I want you to be aware of that you are going to have. Number one is a star that is speaking about you, that is directing people to where you are. Remember that this star directed these three rulers, the three magi, 
to where Jesus was and uh, brought him billions of money. They brought Jesus money. They brought him gold. They brought him the things that he need to have as a king. You need something physical, tangible star in the sky that has your name on it. That star they saw has the name Jesus on it. That star was that star was the GPX that laid this man that directed them to where Jesus was. I want you to listen carefully. A physical, tangible star. Ask God that if somebody has removed your star from the sky, that God should form a new one. That one, because people have touched it, they have tainted it, devils have messed with it, people, wicked people have gone up there, they've destroyed it. That's why you're having problem on the earth. So ask God to replace your star. What represents you in the sky realm? That is what will be directing. You need something tangible up there that is supernaturally going to be speaking to people, no matter where they are in the world, about your business, about your children, about yourself so that they will come to do business with you you need a star for your marriage you need a star for your children you need a star for our ministry you need a star for your business you need a star for your job you need one star that is doing all of that that is directing people to show you great favor jesus did not do anything he did not pray for them to come. Please, please read the Bible. I've just read it for you. Jesus, as a baby, did not pray. Mary and Joseph did not pray for these people to come and bring these things to Jesus and also to come and worship him. They didn't pray. They didn't fast. They didn't ask for these people to come. The star directed them to come. A physical star. You need your star to be put up there so that you can have your star on earth in Hollywood for people to come and walk through. I hope you are listening to what I'm saying this morning because you've never heard this in all of your life. You've never heard. This is a Christmas story and all they will tell you, the pastors will tell you when you go to church is the star led them and that is it and they came and brought him gift everybody should go and put money in the offering plate that's what they tell you because they don't know no better they had no revelation about this i am the first man of god or man from god that god is opening this revelation to about some serious things in the bible and that is why i want you to support me so that i can continue to concentrate for heaven to take me to their university and show me what has never been told to humans so that you can connect with what I'm saying. You can connect with what I'm manifesting and then you can become somebody. Your destiny will be open. You need, oh gee, let me tell you what happened early this morning. This is what I heard. I heard that you are going to win a house and win a car and win a promotion. That's what I heard this morning. Let me continue what I'm saying. I'm just throwing that in because I heard that. And normally, when you are told something, unless you say it to the person, it does not happen. So I'm just telling that to you. Amen. See, Jesus, Jesus did not pray or fast. 
God doing something for us has very little to do with our prayer and fasting. It's about the motive, our motive, our ulterior motive, the faithfulness, the devotion, the responsibility. That's what God is looking at. You can perform all the ceremony, God doesn't look at it. It's not how much of ceremony you perform or how much of prayer or how much of fasting you do that God is looking at. He's looking at your heart. What is your motive for coming to God? That's what he's looking at. See, there was nobody in all of Jerusalem that prayed and asked those men to come to Jesus. Jesus did not ask for them to come. Where there is nobody to help you because of the way you were born, there is nobody to come and put you in money. There is nobody to make you, to give you a great job, even though you are qualified. There is nobody to open doors for you to go to college and become a graduate and have a baccalaureate, master or PhD. There is nobody to train you to be a medical doctor or a lawyer, even though you are qualified for those things. There is nobody to open door for you to find a great husband or a great wife. Nobody to open your womb for you to have children. Please, I'm, I'm just telling you this morning. Some of you are struggling because somebody has extinguished, removed, and destroyed the thing in the universe that is speaking on your behalf, that is directing people to you. I want you to remember that when you were growing up, even until before you got married, you were fooled by voodoo, by witchcraft into the marriage you went into. I hope you are aware how much people cared about you. You had money. Your family had a lot of money, and today they are, no, they are nobody. You didn't used to look for money. Everything was there that you needed. A car is there. Education is there. Suddenly all those things died away from you and your family members. Suddenly, job began to close from before your face. No job, nothing. And the struggle began not till today. And it may be that somebody has broken your star. Somebody has asked devils to remove your star because you don't know. You see, what you don't know is bigger than you. Please write that down. What you do not know is bigger than you until you know, then you are bigger than it. Please write that down. What you do not know is bigger than you until you know, then you will be bigger than it. That's how this thing works. Who remove your star from orbit? Who remove your star from moving around the earth to find the right people? It's not everybody that the star is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna bring certain people to you who are coming to do business with you. Father, if anybody has removed my star from the sky and the star of my partners and the members and people who are watching and people who are going to watch and listen to this broadcast, I am asking that you tell the angels, because this is not something that we can do or manufacture for ourselves. Tell the angels to bring a new one. Lord, manufacture, produce, create a new one. I call new stars to be created on our behalf and to begin to shine and to begin to bring people, draw the right people. See, the reason why you are drawing wrong husband, wrong wives, wrong job, living in wrong places, having wrong people to be our leaders is because the star of many countries, the star from heaven that is supposed to be leading countries, making them wealthy. They've been broken. There's been so much sin and problem that has been done against God. Some of these stars, let me share with you, some of these stars, God himself have removed them. So it's not just the devil that removed them. So many things people have done have also forced God to retrieve 
you are star. So I want you to look into your life and say, God, if I've done anything that has made you to tell the angels to remove my star, to recall it, so that so that it's not working for me. Please, I'm asking you to forgive me. I lay my hand on the blood. That's all I got. And on the name of Jesus, please save me. Please return my star. Because that was what happened in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. God removed the stars and sealed the moon and the sun. He sealed everything. And everything died and perished. And the devils fled. Because they cannot create anything. They can only manifest what has already been manifested. And we think that they've created something. Magic is devils through people manifesting what is already in creation. They don't create. They cannot. They are not allowed to. Ask God to return it. So that people can find you. People of God, people are not finding you. They are not finding you. Because there is nothing to direct them to you. You need it. You need your own star of Bethlehem. It will not be called a star of Bethlehem. It will be called a star of where you were born. If not the star where you were born, it will be called your own star. It will have your name. So if it is the kingdom of God that removed it, tell them to return it. If it is the world of darkness and wicked people that remove it, tell God to replace it. To, to make a new one for you. So that it will draw people. When it shoots its rays, when it comes out, shh, what happens? It means that even though there is daytime, your star is still there. He's shining. He's still directing people. And not only that, your star is speaking. Your star is speaking. I'm talking of physical star that has your name. Up there in the sky realm, it has been put in the sky. Not for decoration, like the ordinary stars. Not for showing this and that. It is there to walk in season and out of season. In year, out of year for you. But mostly to draw people, the right people to you, to come and bless you. Father, send the right people. Lord, shoot our star back into orbit. And let our star begin to shoot our signals. People of God, your star is supposed to shoot our signals to people in, in, in authority, in places. This, these are not mere people. Rulers to come to you. To come and do business, to come and favor you, Father, send us rulers. Lord, Lord, put our star back into orbit, into the sky realm, and let our star begin to shoot signals out. Because there are some of you, your star is up there, but your star is not, is dormant, it's dead, it's a dead star. It's not shooting. What makes it release signals? into the universe and people begin to feel you begin to sense you begin to hear your name begin to want your product begin to want you begin to want your services that power and force in it that make it function has been removed so if it is still there and it is a death star ask God either to repay it and let it begin to function or to renew it or to restore it or to make a new one for you because people need to find you on the earth and one of the ways supernaturally that is done is the physical star that is connected with you this is not astrology this this is not witchcraft this is not a practice of celestial science and knowledge. This is not the zodiac astrology. This is not it. This is about how God uses physical phenomena 
to minister to us on the earth, to connect us to himself. You will ask me, what about the Holy Ghost? Well, are you aware that even though we have the Holy Ghost, we also have angels who come to communicate with us what the Holy Ghost will not tell us? I hope you are aware that your angel will bring messages from heaven and the Holy Ghost will not communicate those messages. I hope you'll be, uh, I hope, gee, you remind me to do a broadcast on how to relate with your angel. How to relate with your angel. Because there are messages from heaven and actions from heaven that the Holy Ghost is not going to tell you. Jesus is not going to tell you. The Father is not going to tell you. It is your angel that is going to release that message to you. So that's the same thing like the stars. There are things that is not the work of the Holy Ghost. Leave my God alone. Leave the leader alone. He has a lot to do. He's already doing his own path. You should know these little, little things. If somebody has hidden your star, tell God to tell that person to go and, to go and put it back where it's supposed to be. And let me tell you, are you aware that also people can steal your stars and be using your star? And they will be shining. They are shining through you. Tell God to put an end to whoever is using your star to shine. Tell God to put an end to it. Let them go and use their own star. Some people want to use their own and your own. Their own and your own. Let God punish anybody and break the hand of anybody and take back your star and place it in the right place to work for you, not for any other person. Because the devil has a trickish way of taking what belongs to you and giving it to some other person because you don't know. I want you to lift up your voice this morning and begin to pray and say, God, you've heard everything that I've spoken to you this morning. Tell God if somebody is using your star, they should return it. If your star has been broken due to collision with other stars, tell God to bring a new one. If somebody has destroyed and removed your star completely from the universe, tell God to put a new one. If your star is hanging in the universe, dormant, not working, no signal is coming, tell God to repair it. Please begin to pray this morning. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Because there will be immediate changes when you pray this prayer. You, there will be immediate changes. Unmute your phone and begin to pray for a few seconds and then we will leave. Please begin to pray. If you want to pray in your heart, if you want to pray loud, please do pray. I ask you to replace it with this Lord, in this Lord, if somebody has stolen my star and using it with their own, Lord, break the hand of the Lord, wicked. Let them not use my star. Let them not use my star. If my star is dormant, put the power back into it. Put the signal. Let it attract the people who were made to bless me. Who were made to teach me. Who were made to love me. Who were made to like me. Who were made and sent to do good to me. If my star is broken or destroyed, put a new one for me. If it's not really functioning properly, restore it. Lord, I thank you that people will be able to find me from now on. People will be able to find this person from now on. And business will begin to boom for us in the name of Jesus. Business will begin to boom. People of God, you will walk into some way. Everybody will rush to come and help you. Everybody will rush to come and do good to you. Why? Because your star is shining. Yes. Is your star shining? Who removed your star? Who stopped your star? Ask yourself that question. I'm praying the prayer. I've just asked you to pray. If you want me to do something about your star, I'm not asking you to call me after this. There are people who are fond of when one, uh, I finish doing a service. 
you guys should be you, you guys should have pity on me i spend a lot of energy to do what i do when once we finish people will start calling me and although i don't have any other thing to do give it some time then you call And don't try to call me every day, except you are, you are in the Covenant Partners Club, and you have a reason to. Or you are a member. Or you are in my small circle of friends. Those are people who can interact with me. Those are people who want to help me, and I'm helping them. I want to thank you for coming to this morning prayer. How many of you have ever heard this kind of thing before? How many of you? Uh oh. I've never heard it. Okay. Never. I too have never. I've never. All right. Never. This is where this is where we 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 bring it to an end. Please, I want to ask you that um, if you um. If you uh, if you wanna make contact with us, please call. Please call. Uh, uh, go to our website and you will see. If you wanna make contact with us, go to our website and you will see. Um, you will see uh, our contact information, and use the uh, there is somewhere there where you can make. You can make suggestions, you can make comments, you can make a request. It's all there for you. I will see you tomorrow morning. I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye. Hallelujah.